it's an impossible race uh, to run when you're comparing yourself to everyone else. So my best piece of advice, a BSMD or not, traditional route or not, is... Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A, brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. What can I help you with? Yeah, so today I just wanted to talk about um, what I need to work on um, to have a better chance to getting into a BSMD program. Okay. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So you're in high school, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay. Um Talk to me about your desires to go to a BSMD program. Well, obviously not taking the MCAT. First <laughs> For class. some. Yeah. Um, and then just having a direct path because I know it's what I want to do. And so instead of having to apply and everything and figure out what I want to do, I know it's like the path I want to take. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's interesting you're asking me because actually my general stance, I don't know if you know this, my general stance is I don't recommend BSMD programs. Uh, really? I think they add a lot of stress to the process um, mm. for some people, right? For some people, it's perfect and, and you go on and live your life and, and uh, you kind of shortcutted the system a little bit. Um, yeah. But for a lot of students, there's, there's a lot of increased pressure because a lot of BSMD programs for the MD part, right, or, or DO, there are BS uh, DO schools as well, um, or pathways programs. For a lot of the medical schools, there are still requirements that you have to meet, right? Maybe it's not taking the MCAT, or maybe it's a 510. Maybe uh, it's you have to maintain a specific GPA. Maybe it's you have to get specific extracurricular activities. And so going into school, again, for some students, and, and we see it, I think, more often than not, which is why I don't recommend them, is it adds pressure to students immediately when there doesn't need to be pressure there, right? Obviously, you're supposed to be a good student. Uh, when you want to go to medical school, you don't have to be a perfect student, but you need to show academic capability. Um, but there are a lot of times a student, obviously, you're working hard to get into the program to begin with. And then there's this, what I think is artificial pressure to do well and maintain some level of of perfection, whatever you want to call it, yeah. immediately, right? It's like, mm -hmm. hey, if you want to maintain your eligibility for our MD program or DO program, you must maintain at least a 3.6 every semester. Yeah. Freshman year is hard for a lot of students, right? It's the first time being away. It's the first time in a college environment. It's the first mm -hmm. time uh, outside of more handholding from high school classes. And it's like, oh, I struggled a little bit. I got B pluses, right? I got a 3.3. Well, now you're not eligible for that MD program now. And now there's that artificial, I'm a failure, when ultimately you're not. You just struggled freshman year, first semester freshman year, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and you have plenty of time to improve and, and, and can easily get into any program you want to. Um, and so that's, that's, in general, why I don't recommend them. With that said, okay. let's focus on you. Let's say you, you want to, to get into one. I, I think ultimately there's nothing really different between a BSMD or BSDO, I'm just gonna say BSMD. For all of you watching, I mean both, but I'm just gonna say BSMD. Um, BSMD programs and, and regular MD or DO programs. At the end of the day, you have to be a good student, right? The, the medical schools don't want you um, if, if you're not gonna do well in medical school. They want to make sure you have some understanding of what you're getting yourself into. And it's really hard for high school students to get a lot of experiences because there are a lot of things like being an EMT or a medical assistant or CNA where there are age limitations. And so you don't have the same uh, ability, but you also don't have the same expectation from the medical schools. But they wanna mm -hmm. see you doing something related to healthcare to, to explore this passion that you say you have to go out and, and have this career as a physician. And then um, there are lots of students out there. Research is typically a little bit more available for high school students um, going out, getting research and trying to do publications and all of that fun stuff. All of the normal things that, that quote unquote, typical pre-med students are doing, mm -hmm. you should be doing as well. And then, and then ultimately what it comes down to is just finding those programs, finding those schools that you think um, will be a good fit for you, 
right? Where there's some alignment in who you are as a person and the school and their mission and all of that fun stuff. Yeah. And and putting yourself out there and, and and crossing your fingers. I mean, my only experience right now is being an EMT. Okay. Actually, it's funny. Um, well, most of my experience is being an EMT. I okay. just feel like I don't have like everything that's needed to apply. You know what I mean? That full De- like. Defi- define, right? Define what yeah. is needed. Because usually there is nothing needed. <laughs> but there's everything that's needed, right? That's yeah. the frustrating part about this process is is there aren't a lot of quote unquote required things. But um, to talk about what, what you think you don't have that's quote unquote needed. Um, like more research, like the publications. I mean, I have one, but um, I don't know. I just feel like there's so many people saying, oh, I have this, I have this. Yeah. Mo- know, most, most undergraduate students applying to medical school don't have publications. And they're getting into med school, just fine. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so you are not immune from the comparison game where you're comparing yourself against everyone else, and you think yeah. you have this imposter syndrome of like, well, they have more hours, and they have more publications, and they have more research, and they cured cancer, and I didn't do anything. Right. Yeah. It's 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 an impossible race uh, to run when you're comparing yourself to everyone else. So my best piece of advice, a BSMD or not, traditional route or not, is stop thinking about what everyone else is doing and what everyone else has. Because mm-hmm. I promise you, they're sitting on the other side of that mirror going, oh my gosh, she has so much more stuff than I do. Oh my gosh, she has all of her stuff together. I, I'm just a mess, right? Yeah. Every, everyone is thinking the same thing no matter where they are in this situation. Talk to me about, because I'm sure someone's listening to this going, wait a minute, how are you in high school and you're an EMT? Talk about how you got EMT experience at a younger age. So in New York, where I live, you can't. So I went to Connecticut and they have this organization through... Um, an EMS organization where you can like be, be a part of a club and then through that club you can get your EMT certification mm-hmm. like I did it during the summer but there's four classes a year I think okay what's the minimum like, age requirement for that do you know 16 nice so yeah and then so it was and then what kind of restrictions do you have on what you're doing as as an EMT right because I'm, I'm assuming mm-hmm. you're not a not to say that you're not a real EMT, but I'm assuming there's there are some sort of restrictions based on your age. Surprisingly, there's not that many. I mean, obviously, when you first join, you can't just like all hands on um, <laughs> be the only EMT there. Look at me. Um, I'm doing a trach. <laughs> no, exactly. So we always have to be in the ambulance with two others. So okay. one paramedic and one EMT. Okay. But usually, like after the first two times you ride, once you're certified, you're pretty much doing everything. Nice. So, so it's it's, it's basically a typical apprenticeship kind of setup. Um, yeah. I just like, don't get paid and I can't drive the ambulance. Oh, talk about that. You don't get paid. So it's a volunteer position. Yeah. Ah, there's the trick. <laughs> they're, they're using you as free labor. Got it. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and sometimes that's a fair trade. Uh, there, there obviously are a lot of uh, inequalities. Um, those who can do stuff for free versus those who can't, and that's always a uh, an issue with the system that we have. So, um, but for those that it works, it works, and for everyone else, let's let's keep fighting the good fight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What are, what other questions do you have? Um, I don't know. What else do you see most people applying to med school with? Like, what experiences other than that? Yeah, I think the biggest things are are shadowing and clinical experience for for everyone across the board. Um, mm-hmm. That those to me are the biggest things uh, that students need to prove to the to themselves first that they want to be physicians, that they like patient care, that they they like taking care of people who are um, not always in the best of moods and uh, don't always smell like sunshine and rainbows. So it's yeah. it's. To me, the biggest thing is is if you're saying you want to have a career taking care of people, but your actions don't show that, that's mm-hmm. a huge, huge red flag and a, a huge no. So getting those experiences like you are as an EMT is great. And then, sure, research, wonderful if you can get it. If you don't, not the end of the, 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 the line. There are a lot of schools out there that are 
very much mission aligned to community service and serving the underserved outside of healthcare yeah. as well. So mm-hmm. um, volunteer experiences like Habitat for Humanity or volunteering at the homeless shelter, soup kitchen kind of stuff, just things that you can do out in the community that aren't related to healthcare. Those are always powerful things that you can be doing. Leadership is uh, is something that a lot of schools are looking for. So who mm-hmm. are you as a person? Uh, in in your group of peers, are you a leader? Are you not? And not everyone has to be a leader. Um, obviously, there are lots of kind of uh, analogies drawn of leadership to say, oh, being a physician and you're the leader of the healthcare team, and so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna show you how I have all of these leadership experiences. And you don't have to draw those lines, um, but but leadership is something that's important. The AMCAS application, which you wouldn't use, but um, the, the main application to medical school added a social justice and advocacy category this year for, for those that are highly involved in, in those types of activities. So there, there are lots of things. Um, what about like our stats, like as important as like people say they are like, um, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they, they are important. They're typically not as important as people make them out to be at the end of the day your stats have to show that you're academically capable of doing well in medical school, right? Okay. The worst thing that a medical school can do is accept you and have you fail out. It looks bad on the medical school and it looks bad for you, mm-hmm. right? They're judged on that as well for their accreditation process. And then yeah. obviously for you, you don't want to to walk around and be in walk, a, a walking advertisement for a school that you owe sixty thousand dollars for tuition and you don't have a degree yeah they don't want that it's not good for you so uh first and foremost it's important to a certain extent and every medical school hopefully is working off of their own data that says hey students with at least a 3.1 science gpa they do fine right maybe there's a little bit of of extra help that the 3.1 to 3.3 students need um but, but they'll have data that shows, hey, students coming in with, with this GPA range, they pass, no issues. Students coming in with this MCAT score, they're doing well on the boards, no issues. And so a lot of schools will have internal cutoffs for what the data shows works for them. And then mm-hmm. typically that's not published information. So they're not telling everyone, hey, we're, <laughs> these are our cutoffs. But um, so, so they are big but they're not yeah. as important as, as students make it out to be, right? You don't have to have a 3.8 and a, a perfect MCAT score, so Ming, you take the MCAT. I mean, that's all the questions I prepared. Like, what awesome. else is Yeah, that's important. it. Yeah. Go out and have fun. And and uh, again, I, I'll, I'll finish with what I started with. I don't recommend mm-hmm. BSMD programs. It's, okay. it's, just, it's yeah. just a line. Like, my, my general response is, what's the rush? I, I understand the the desire, and it's funny that you even know what the MCAT is, right? I didn't know what the MCAT was until my junior year of college when I had to take the MCAT. And you're sitting here in high school going, I want to avoid the MCAT. I'm like, Psh. I'm glad that people are scared of the MCAT way in high school. Yeah. But but ultimately, it's a test that that obviously lots of people successfully take every single year. Yeah. Um, and so it's not... It's not a beast that has to be built up to su- uh, as something to be avoided. And so mm-hmm. you're trying to rush through and do this accelerated program. And I understand you're like, I know this is what I want to do. But yeah. you also are a kid and you also are going to go and explore life as a, as a young adult as you go off to college and figure that stuff out and figure out mm-hmm. who you are. And so I'm just, I don't know, I'm just a big fan of, of letting you explore and, and yeah. obviously, yes, if you want to go to medical school, go down that path and figure out how to get in. Mm-hmm. But, but to do it through a BSMD program, I, I think just adds a lot of stress and potentially uh, limits your psychologically that what you think you're allowed to do or can do because you have to maintain a certain GPA and do all this other stuff to, to maintain your eligibility. So that's all. Yeah. 